A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on a road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and went and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before a shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his prosperity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azatus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, you peoples, loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appeal to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Blessed be God who refused me not, my prayer or his kindness. Dominus Fobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem, Gloria Tibi et Homine. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. 
Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Verbum Domini. Last evening, I received a call from one of our employees. His wife has been struggling with cancer for some time, and she had just come home, and it looked like she was coming close to the end. She was breathing with difficulty, and so he asked if I could come over, and of course I did, immediately went over there. And all of the things that the church offers, the strengthening through the anointing of the sick that gives us strength at that hour, the uh, apostolic pardon that the church grants to those who are dying to be freed of all of the uh, effects of our sins, and viaticum, the food for the journey. And so after all of those prayers and praying with the family and the two children that were there. I left and this morning I saw this message that Jack had sent to me. He said, Father, it's Jack. You probably weren't to the end of the street when Susie passed away. From the time you arrived until she passed, it was just a remarkable grace. Our children were very struck by the moment. It was almost as though she were waiting for our Lord in the most blessed sacrament. Thank you so much. And then I responded back. I said, Jack, I'm grateful that I was chosen to bring the bread of life to Susan last night. Today's gospel will be a consolation to you. May she rest in peace. I will remember her and all of you in my prayers and mass this morning. And what did the gospel we just heard say? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Heaven, whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. So what a consolation the sacraments of the church are, especially when we approach the end of our lives, to have that strengthening of the anointing, to have the apostolic pardon, to have the food for the journey, that last journey into eternal life. The uh, catechism refers to the 12th article of our faith, I believe in life everlasting, and it says, when the church for the last time speaks Christ's words of pardon and absolution over the dying Christian, seals him for the last time with a strengthening anointing, and gives him Christ in viaticum as nourishment for the journey, she speaks with gentle assurance. These are beautiful words that I love to say to those who are dying these words of the church, these, this gentle assurance of the church. You know, a priest friend of mine said that we priests are on the front lines of what God is doing, that we get to see God at work in the souls of people and especially at the end of their lives. But these are the, the final commendation, words that 
are said to that person at the end of the prayers for the dying. And there, I commend you, my dear sister, to Almighty God and entrust you to your Creator. May you return to him who formed you from the dust of the earth. May Holy Mary, the angels, and all the saints come to meet you as you go forth from this life. May Christ, who was crucified for you, bring you freedom and peace. May Christ, who died for you, admit you into his garden of paradise. May Christ, the true shepherd, acknowledge you as one of his flock. May he forgive all your sins and set you among those he has chosen. May you see your Redeemer face to face and enjoy the vision of God forever. So this morning, we are privileged once again to be able to receive the bread of life for man to eat and to never die. St. Irenaeus speaks about how the Eucharist is made up of something that comes from the earth, but then through the words of consecration, it's not ordinary food anymore. It becomes something extraordinary. And he says, similarly, when we receive the Eucharist into our very selves, we're no longer corruptible that we have this divine life, this incorruptibility, this resurrected life within us, that we too are made extraordinary. And to think of that uh, eternal life to which we are all called, the food of eternal life that we receive every time we receive Holy Communion. So let us think a little bit about our heavenly destiny, especially in this season of Easter, especially in light of today's gospel where Jesus speaks of giving us the bread of life. The Catechism says that this life of heaven really is beyond all description. We can't describe it. We don't have the experience really to be able to put it into words accurately. But what the scriptures do give us are different images, images that help us to have some idea of what heaven is like. And this is Catechism 1027. So the scripture speaks of it in images. Life is one of the images, the bread of life. So we have life, we're alive here on this earth, and yet it's often weighed down with burdens or illness or dying. It's a limited life, and we want something that's unlimited that's the fullness of life. We feel like we're not completely fully alive. That's the life of heaven, where we are made fully alive, this life that is unending, that we have a sense when we lose a loved one that this isn't the end, and it shouldn't be the end, that love is something eternal, that it, it, it must go on forever. Another image the scripture uses, light, light. You know, we have a little overcast day today. How different we feel even when the sun is shining and brightly and, and we have this, this joy even that comes from, from light. And those who have had near-death experiences, that they experience this, this light, this brilliant light, those who have experienced the saints who have visited them like Lucia describing Our Lady. Here's what Lucia of Fatima said of Our Lady's apparition. <clears throat> she said, we beheld Our Lady all dressed in white. She was more brilliant than the sun and radiated a light more clear and intense and a crystal glass filled with sparkling water when the rays of the burning sun shine through it. We stopped astounded before the apparition. We were so close, just a few feet from her, that we were, we were bathed in the light which surrounded her. You know, Jesus, when he spoke of the kingdom of heaven in Matthew chapter 13, 
he spoke of the weeds and the wheat and that they would be separated. And he said this, then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. You see, the joy of our soul will radiate in this brilliance, this, this light, this glory. We all want the attention of those that we love. But God gives us the supreme attention, if you will, by letting us share in his glory and his love. And the supreme happiness of the soul radiates in this brilliance, this, this light. So, again, another image that the scriptures use is of peace. We all have disturbances and anxieties and worries. And yet, in the Lord, we find some peace. And eternally, it's going to be this perfect tranquility of the order of being in God and with God forever. A wedding feast. The Bible concludes with a wedding feast. The wedding feast of the Lamb and his bride, the church. We're members of that bride. And we think of the joy of the celebration of a wedding that this is going to be a super abundant joy and celebration when we are united with the Lamb, with our Lord, who is the bridegroom of our souls. We who are members of the bride, his church. The Father's house. There are many dwelling places, Jesus said. And I go to prepare a place for you. The heavenly Jerusalem. The scriptures often speak of a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. But it's that heavenly Jerusalem, that eternal home, that eternal city. Here we have no lasting city. We look to that city that is to come. And finally, paradise. And the, that article in the catechism concludes... No eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. This is what the Easter season reminds us of every year. It's the longest liturgical season of the year because it's a reminder that eternity is forever. It is the longest period of our existence, right? Eternity. Finally, I'd like to conclude with words of our own dear mother Angelica who passed into eternity on Easter Sunday and these were her reflections on what the resurrection will be like when she would go to eternity this was her thoughts on that she said Jesus or she this is more of like a prayer she said Jesus the joy of your resurrection fills my soul with exaltation and the realization that my body too will rise someday. Like your five wounds, my suffering will also shine for all to see. The wisdom of the Father will be glorified forever as all men see how his plan and will in my life marked out the glory that would be mine for all eternity. You know, sometimes in this life we question, why does this happen? Why did this tragedy happen? But Mother is pointing out that in eternity we will see the wisdom of the Father. We will understand. And we will see how his plan and his will in our own lives marked out the glory that would be ours for all eternity. Mother continued all the trials, sufferings, heartaches, and disappointments will seem as nothing compared to the glory your sufferings merited for me. They shall all seem like a dream, and the vision of your faith will fill my soul with exquisite joy. I will roam freely in the love of the Spirit forever and ever. <laughs>